everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are having the most wonderful day because who doesn't want to have the most wonderful day? Anyways, today, thank you for joining me by the way. Anyways, today we're going to be going over products with a learning curve because I think that when you think of products with a learning curve, you think false lashes, liquid liner. Well, there are a lot of products that I have found that I think have a learning curve to them that a lot of people wouldn't really think do. And so I want to go over a few of those with you today. And I will be mentioning these in order of the way that I apply them, just because that's easier for my brain to comprehend, but we're going to go ahead and jump right in. So the first product that I have up is actually a primer. This is the NYX Angel Veil Skin Perfecting Primer. A lot of people like to compare this guy to the Hourglass one. I don't know. I think that they are relatively comparable, but um, this one is definitely a bit thicker. Um, and the reason that I say that this has a learning curve is because this is a product that you cannot just squeeze out of the tube and then put directly on your skin. And that is something that I do with most of my primers. And I found that if you do that with this one, it's going to peel, it's going to look kind of funny, it's going to take forever to get rubbed into your skin. So what I recommend doing with this product is putting it in your hands first, warming it up in your hands, and then applying it that way. And that is the only way that I have found to make this product work. But if you do it that way, it's gorgeous and it looks beautiful on the skin. Next up is a foundation. This is the Collab Meet Your Matte Velvet Foundation. I think I've mentioned this one to you guys before, but the only thing that I have a problem with this one is it is such a scientific amount that you need to to find for yourself when using this product. If you use too little, it's going to look like nothing, it's going to be patchy, and it's going to be weird. And if you use too much, it's going to slip and slide off of your face, and you're never going to get it to blend into your skin. So that's the only issue that I have with this guy. But other than that, it is a really nice foundation. It is just really, really, truly an exact science of how much you need to use with this one. The next product I have for you guys is the color pop no filter sticks this is actually a stick foundation and if you're using it that way I would assume that it's like any other stick foundation you put it on you blend it in with a brush you're good to go I purposely got mine in a shade that is much deeper than my skin tone so that I could contour with it so you guys can see that's not gonna match my face however I think that if you get a darker shade than what your what your skin tone is I think that that's honestly the way that this product should be used is as a cream contour product because if you use this as a stick foundation, I have a feeling that if you're oily, it wouldn't really work out for you. So I really like to use this as a cream contour, and the best way that I have found to blend it in is actually with a wet sponge. So a lot of times when people use cream contour, they also blend it in with a really dense foundation brush. This one gets blended in a lot easier with a uh, with a wet sponge. Next product we have, this is just a little, little baby guy, but this is Benefits Benetint, and they have a couple different liquid blushy products like this but Benetint is definitely their most popular let me tell you guys if you get this to work for you it is so so pretty but if you don't you're gonna look like a clown and it's not cute so what you got to do with this one essentially is you just have to work so fast you have to work very very fast to get this product to work so you put it on one cheek you blend it out really really quickly you put it on the other cheek you blend it out really really quickly if you put this on both cheeks at the same time you're gonna have little spots that look like really abnormal freckles all over your face so <laughs> that is something to keep in mind when working with liquid products like this is they dry very 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 fast next up I have the cover effects custom enhancer drops it's a liquid highlight honestly any liquid highlighty product like this I feel like has a little bit of a curve to learning how to use it because you cannot go in with a regular highlighter brush and put it on like you normally would. I like to apply these with either a fan brush, with my fingers, or with a wet sponge, depending on what level of highlight you want. So when it comes to these guys, you really, really have to use just the teeniest, teeniest, tiniest amount. I think that these honestly look the best mixed into a foundation. Mix it into a matte foundation, you'll get a dewy finish and it's gorgeous. But if you're using it as a standalone highlight, you really need to be careful with how much you use because you'll people will be able to see you from the moon. <laughs> 
Moving into eyes, that was all that I had for the face products to show you guys, but moving into eyes, this is an eyebrow pomade. And this is one that everybody recognizes. This is the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. However, when it comes to any brow pomade, it's gonna take you a while to learn how to use it. That's honestly just the truth. It's going to take a while to learn how to use brow pomades because you have to use them with a brush. They're not like a pencil. Pencils are really easy. But when it comes to pomades, you have to learn how to fill in part of your brow, flip around, brush through, fill in another part of your brow, flip around, brush through, or you'll end up with sharpied on brows that are very interesting looking. <laughs> and also with this, you don't have quite as much control as you do with a pencil because you go slightly outside the lines and you have brown stuff all over your face. So <laughs> learning how to use brow pomades is an adventure, but once you learn how to use them, they look really, really, really great. <laughs> then we have this little guy. This is the Fenty Beauty Eyeshadow Primer. And let me tell you guys, this eyeshadow primer is one of the best I've ever used in my entire life. But if you don't use it correctly, you're going to have a complete mess on your hands. So this is one that you need to let dry. Every eye primer that I have ever used in my life, up until this one, I can put it on and put my eyeshadow directly on top of it, like right away. This one, you need to wait about a minute before you put your eyeshadow on top of it, otherwise it's really, really sticky, and wherever you put your brush initially, it's just going to be a huge, giant clump of pigment, and it's not going to blend no matter how much you try. So this one, you definitely need to wait a while to let it dry down, but once it's dried down, your eyeshadows will stay in place, they'll be more vibrant, they'll be so, so pretty until you wash them off at the end of the day. So going into these next three products, these are all just general basic products that you would think of when it comes to products with a learning curve. The first one being glitter, and I have so many different glitters, but when it comes to glitter, it's a mess. <laughs> and everybody knows that it's a mess. So when you're doing glitter, I think you know by now, you need to use a glitter adhesive unless it's a glitter that comes pre-adhesive like the Stila glitter and glows like those ones you don't really have to worry about those are super easy loose glitters you need a glitter adhesive and if you're not going to use one good luck I I don't think it's going to work out very well for you <laughs> the second thing that you need to know when it comes to glitter is you probably want to do wherever you're putting that glitter you probably want to do that part of your face first so that any fallout you can just wipe away and it won't be a problem my personal preference for glitter is having it on the eyes so you're probably gonna want to put your eyeshadow on first before you do the rest of your face so whenever i use glitter i do brows eyeshadow the rest of my face and that's just how I find it easiest because you can wipe away that excess glitter and then you don't have a bunch of glitter all over your face for the rest of your makeup <laughs> and so when it comes to glitter yeah they're super pretty they're also a giant mess and you have to get used to them the next product that a lot of people think of when it comes to a learning curve is liquid eyeliner and this is something that you just have to figure out for yourself honestly when it comes to the easiest way to do it, I would say, if you want a wing, is hold your liner up to your nose, hold it right here, and then just press that tip down. And that's gonna give you your initial wing, and then you can fill it in from there. That's how I find it easiest for beginners. However, when it comes to liquid eyeliner, you need a really steady hand. You need to learn how to do it yourself. But once you get over that hump of learning how to do it, then most of the time you can make it work really, really well for you. The last thing that I have for you guys when it comes to products that people generally think of when they think of learning curves is false lashes. And if you want to know my thoughts on false lashes for beginners, because I know that everybody had a learning curve with lashes, I do have an entire video that I will link up in the cards and down below for you guys on how to apply your false lashes because I know that it can be very, very difficult for a lot of people. Next up, this isn't a product that I think that people would think of when they think of a learning curve, but this is a mascara that I have. And with mascaras, generally, it's very self-explanatory. You put it on your lashes and you're done. And I know that a lot of people have a hard time getting it, um, 
to not transfer because learning how to have your eyes shaped the proper way or whatever to put on your mascara can be a little bit difficult but this mascara in particular is the collab wow effect mascara and i want to talk about this one because of the way that the wand is shaped you have i don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this but you have this edge which has one row of bristles and then this edge which has like three or so rows of bristles and so the easiest way that I have found to apply this one is you use the fatter edge with, with more bristles first and that's your first coat and then you use the thinner edge with one row of bristles and that's your second coat because the first will volumize the second will lengthen and separate a little bit so this one is kind of interesting to figure out how the wand works but once you get it down your lashes look really really nicely fanned out and really pretty this one is one of my favorite mascaras of all time but i will tell you when i first saw the wand i panicked a little bit so don't be don't be too too jazzed up about the wand on this one because it's really really good the last two products that I have to show you guys are both for lips. The first one being the Maybelline Superstay 24 Hour Color. These are lip stains, but like liquid lipsticks at the same time. They're super, super weird. So first of all, with this side, which is the actual color, you have to work so fast getting these on your lips because once they dry down, they're not moving. And once they're not moving, if you try and go in with a second layer or you try and touch up, it will peel like hell so you have to work so fast with this first layer and then there's a little balm on the other side that you're going to want to reapply often but if you apply this balm while well, this has not dried yet you're gonna have a giant mess on your hands so these ones you just have to have to figure out how long they take to dry and then once you do that they really do last a very very long time so they're they're a weird product and they've been around probably since before I was born, but you got to figure out how to work with them a little bit. And then the very last product that I have to show you guys, this one's not necessarily a learning curve, I wouldn't say, but this is the Soap and Glory Sexy Mother Pucker Lip Gloss. And this one is another one that comes down to how much you're using, because if you use too much, it will burn like Satan on your mouth, okay? It's not fun. Um, but if you use just the right amount, you'll get this nice tingly feeling. It's, it's not good for your lip skin, by the way. It's really, really bad for it. The ingredients list on here is horrendous. However, if you want to plump up your lips a little bit, this'll do it. <laughs> um, but this one, you cannot use a, a normal amount with this one as you would use with other lip glosses because your mouth will bur burn like the depths of hell. So be careful with how much you're putting on because, oh my God, you do not want to experience what I experienced. It's, it's awful and not fun. Anyways, those are all of the products that I had to show you guys today. If you enjoyed this video, if you took something away from it, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. If you would like to watch my last video, you can go ahead and do that right over here. And if you would like to subscribe to my channel, which I urge you all to do, please do that. You can go ahead and click right over here and I will see you all in my next one. Bye guys.